How's everybody doing? Fine. I'm fine. You're fine? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I don't hear anybody. Okay, good. Can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me. Okay, lift your hands to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I found something out that God is good no matter how many idiots are in the world and devils, and there are many, God is a good father. He's a good boss. And uh, my Bible is in my other briefcase, but I want to hold my Bible and uh, <laughs> say that the Word of God is the, is the key to life. Everything that you could possibly want can be derived from the covenant that a person can make with God. Did you get that? Did you get that? Yes. Everybody say, if I make a covenant with God, if I make a covenant with God, he's always good to keep his end. It's me that's the problem. It's me who is the problem. And it's the people around. I have, I have never seen a, a horrible situation like you see in the world. So many people that have a tremendous lack of understanding of many things. And that's why they struggle in life. You know? But that's not the plan of God for us. His plan for us is to be great people, powerful people, and to have everything good in life. Lift your hands to the Lord and say, Father, I, I take it in Jesus' name. Now I want to give you the next key. You say, I take, I take, I take. You see, you like to say that. But then you have to say, I have to give, I have to give, I have to give. I have to give. Yeah, you like to take. Yeah, but there's nothing, there's nothing for you to take unless you give. And I'm a, I'm a prophet, the true prophet of God, that will tell you that. If you don't give, you'll struggle all the days of your life. And don't think anybody wants your money because you don't have very much. Lift your hand and say, how much do I have? Let me see your pockets. What do you got in your pockets? How big are your pockets? How much cash do you have? How many millions do you have in your pocket? How many, how many millions do you have? I'm waiting for all the amens to die down. It's quiet. You don't have, so don't worry about it. Nobody needs anything from you. You need to give so that you can get blessed yourself. Say amen to that. Amen. When I speak, I only tell what's on the mind of God. And I don't care where I am, it doesn't matter. You know, I'll tell you what's on the mind of God. If you're not a giver, you will struggle all the days of your life. And biblically speaking, that's, all, that's also the case. If you give out sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you give generously, you'll reap bountifully and abundantly. If you're a generous person, your life will become very powerful and very blessed. Very few people are truly blessed. Many times the money they have, they stole it, they did some crooked deals, or they came into it through family inheritance or some connection to something. But there's very few people that can climb their way up to a high place just based on what they're doing themselves. But God has called you to do that. He's called me to do that. He's called every one of us to do that. And if you live looking for always for someone to help you, you're like the man at the pool of Bethesda. The man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5, he stayed there for a long time and he couldn't get anything. Then Jesus came and said, now I'm here. <laughs> And he still complained. He asked nobody to help him. 
You don't need someone to help you. You need to help yourself. Hello? And someone said, I'm waiting on God. No, he's waiting for you. Somebody say, he's waiting for me. He is waiting for me. Oh, oh, you didn't know that. I'm waiting on God. One day, things are going to be good. Nonsense. Things will be the same as they were if you don't change yourself. Hello? I'm trying to help. I'm, I'm trying to help everybody. This is why I preach the way, the, the true gospel. So stop listening to people that are not helping you get ahead. You need to listen to somebody like me. I'm not doing an advertisement for myself. But you need to listen to someone who's going to empower you to know the truth, because the truth will make you free. You know that John 8, 32, the scripture says, the truth won't just set you free. People misquote it, but it'll make you free. It'll make you something you were not before. If you will follow the truth, the truth will lead you into a path of abundance and blessing. Lift your hands to the Lord and say, Father, I believe that's for me. And I have to work on myself. Yeah, okay. Somebody say, I have to work on myself. God sees over 8 billion people on the earth and in his business-minded sense, he shakes his head looking at people and says, I wonder if they're ever going to figure it out. Somebody thinks, oh, God sees all the suffering children of the world. The children are innocent because they, were born, they grow up in an environment. That's why the compassion to have for children should be great in anybody that's really got, have the Holy Spirit because you see they're innocent victims. They're victimized by their environment. Hello? They didn't do it to themselves, but the people that should have done better are the adults. So God looks at people and he goes, so many people are just there. And God says, what are you going to do? Lift your hands and say, I'm going to do something. Oh, yes. Say, I have to do something to get something. <laughs> this business in Kenya that you think you're going to take from somebody is cursed by God. Oh, I'm going to do something here today. I can feel it right now. These, these preachers here will never tell you this. A few will tell you, men that are really men of God, not quote-unquote apostle, bishop, whatever, no, no, no. All these titles and you have no power, you're a joke. Let me tell you about myself. I was standing outside there. And a lady said to me, what should I call you, apostle? I answered and said, call me whatever you want. She went, oh, I'm God's servant. You give me titles, I say what you want. Bishop, doctor, apostle, whatever, say what you want. The power of God is what's important, not the man's title. You get it? So this system of people thinking that there's somebody when they're nobody is a deception. You're, you're not fooling God, certainly. And you're really not fooling a lot of people. You're just fooling around with yourself. So show up next time. Let me help you. And say, what's your name? A bishop, doctor, apostle? Say, no, my name is Thomas. I'm okay with that. What's your name? Say your name. Beatrice. I heard you first. Hey, you're right. 
Speak to this. She was first. God bless you, Mom. You're, you're quick. Thank you for the Swahili. It's helping, I think. We need the Swahili. It's okay. Hakuna Shida. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. He's good. All the time. But am I good? Sometimes. Sometimes. The business of being a taker, looking for someone to give you, and you don't want to work, you don't want to do anything powerful, it's cursed by God. It, it's not blessed by God. And if I'm here for any divine reason, I believe I am somehow. I'm going to speak this right here in the capital city. And people will see this all over on, on video. Yes. The system of, 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 the whole cultural system has been based on taking from people. Either people think that someone's going to give you, or you steal, or you lie and cheat. All of that is cursed by God. In fact, if you live like that forever, you won't even get to heaven. You'll burn in the lake of fire. Because you can't live a dirty life and expect to have the clean God take you as his own. And people cry all the time in meetings, I repent, I repent. Repent for what? The Lord says, stop thinking about everybody else and think about yourself. Oh man, this is powerful. Stop concerning yourself with everybody else. It's not even your business. Lord, forgive us for our, what we've done in our nation. Stop it. Stop it. Or, or pray, pray like that for a few minutes only. And then get into the thing about your own life. Lift your hands. Say, it's me, Lord, that's standing in the need of prayer. Yeah. Repentance is a change of lifestyle. People see me, they see the American man, they think I have something for them. No, I don't. Get your own. The land is full of resources, there's money everywhere. The foreign man didn't come with a bag of money for you. Forget it. Make your own money. Say, I'm going to make my own money. Crooked preachers are cursing the land. Let me tell you here. Preachers that run millions in their own pockets and they don't want to give anything to a servant of God when he comes to preach there. Is that okay? It's not okay. See sour. They're a joke. They're not impressing God. When you have a life that's powerful, you're going to live to be a giver. Lift your hands, say, Lord, help me, please. Now, I know it's rough. I know it's rough. But say, I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best, Lord. I'm going to start today. Yeah. You have something small. Be the one to pay the bill for tea. Don't look for someone to buy for you. Even if you have little, little uh, amounts of things, give, start to give small things. Don't say, when I have, I'll give. Give something now. And, and think about other people. Be kind to other people. Somebody would think that they would lose when they do that, but really you win when you do that. 
Because Jesus said, do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. So when you think about another person, try to be like generous in your life. This is the key to getting blessed. The bottom line of everything, the central theme of everything is where is God? Someone say, where is God? Ask the question, where is God? Is he very powerful in my life yet? Can he be more powerful in my life? Can he be? Say, Lord, I want to please you. Oh, when, I got to tell you, I have to tell you something. When you make God happy, wow, he will, re, he will respond. This should be the focus of your life now. Leave the other things alone. Do what you can with everything you're doing. But start to internalize and look at yourself. And say, how can I have a better life to please you more, Lord? Let me tell you something else. God doesn't care what church you go to. Oh, prophet, come on now. He doesn't care what songs you sing. Even if you could preach, he doesn't care. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, the power of myself, the power of myself, is not that the fact that I can do anything. It's only that he can do something through me. It's all about him. It's not about me. Do you understand that? So this needs to be the focus. How much is God moving through me? Because that's the only thing that can change the world. You want to see the devil run? Get God to show up. <laughs> Woo! Get God to show up. The yeah, devil has nothing to do. You want to get rid of every demon around you? Get, get the presence of the Holy Spirit to show up. I don't have any devils in me. They can't be next to me any time of day. When I sleep, the angels are around me every, all day, all night. The presence of heaven is in, is in 24 hours a day. Where is the devil? He's in some fool's house. He's with some people that don't understand how to get rid of him. The devil is a loser. And so are his ugly friends. Any friend of the devil is a loser. They rule nothing. They have no authority at all. The devil has been kicked out forever. He can never be redeemed. <laughs> to coin a phrase, he can never be redeemed. Ooh, maybe he can. Anyway, sorry. We'll, 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 ca we'll catch that later. Anyway, you, you got to understand the devil's position is nowhere. He's only one place. Let me stretch my other leg. Woo! I needed that. We do some exercise in the in the. Put your foot down and say, "Devil, that's where you are." Hallelujah! Shaitania Shinway. Jesus said, you'll walk on serpents and scorpions and crush them under your feet. Luke 10, 19. 
And he said, nothing shall by any means hurt you or harm you. But that's only when you're in the presence of God. When you, when you stop praying and stop studying the Bible and stop walking with the Holy Spirit, the devil see opportunities to come around your life. Oh, thank God, Bishop, you're preaching good now. When, when, uh, when you do something that's wrong, now the devil creeps closer. But I want to give you a solution. Write this down. 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9. Johanna what? Okay. 1 John 1.9. Write it down. It says, We confess our sin to the Lord. And we really should use this prayer a lot. And uh, he's faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now after that, the devil looks at us, he has nothing to do. James 4, 7 says, submit to God and then resist the devil. Some people want to resist the devil, but they didn't submit to God. That's the problem. But the Bible says in James 4, 7, when you resist the devil, he will flee away from you, run away. Like a terrified man. That's his place to be running from you. You don't need to fear him. He fears you. The purpose of the church, the purpose of the gospel, number one, to save the souls of men. Most important of anything. If you don't get born again, what do you have? You have nothing. But after that, the word of God, and the, 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 uh, the gospel and the move of the Holy Spirit is to make us powerful. Lift your hands and say, I'm becoming powerful. If everybody would work on that, the devil would be no more in Kenya. Lift your hands up. Let's pray. Let's pray. If everybody would be full of the Holy Spirit. I feel like I'm preaching like Bonky now. I'm, I'm seeing Bonky in my spirit. I'm seeing Bonky right now. Wow. He's God, but I'm here. Wow. I, I received the call. I, I received the mantle. I received it. When you become filled with the Holy Spirit, the devil has no place. I think our eyes many times have been on the wrong things. From today, make a new commitment. I'm going to look at God. I'm going to attract him to myself. I'm going to work the laws of God. I'm going to be walking in the ways of God. And everything good will happen in my life from then. I'm going to be a giver more than a taker. A strange scripture is this. It's very interesting. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Why? It's good to receive, isn't it? We love to receive. All of us, we love to receive. We want to receive money. We want to receive love. We want to receive good things. 
We want to receive favor and honor and whatever else. And anything we need and want in life, we want to receive all of that. So why does the scripture say it's better to give? Because there's a deep revelation in there. When, when you give, now you'll receive everything. When you give, it guarantees you're receiving. How many wanted to receive something, but you didn't get it? Let me see your hand. How many really wanted something, but you didn't get it yet? How many were expecting something from somebody or somewhere, but it didn't happen? It happens a lot, right? Let me tell you how to break that cycle. Start to give and lift your hand to the Almighty and say, Father, I'm generous, I'm giving out, now I want to receive back. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I assure you by the Holy Ghost and by the Word of God, you will receive back. God will arrange things for you to receive. I know one man in America, he's, he's millions are coming into his ministry. He says, everything I have, I gave. And the word of God, the law of God is making the harvest to come back to me. He says, I'm not special. I'm just obeying the word. One time when he had $108,000. He had $108,000 in his account. And he was in a conference with another great apostle who I also know. And the Lord spoke to him and says, give $100,000. His first thought was, Lord, I need that money. I only have $108,000. So he, it, with pain, he obeyed God. He just decided to do it. And now he has 8,000 left. It's not enough to take care of what he needs. But God touched someone to give him $1 million. Lift your hands. You see, it works. But you have to move first. Are you seeing this? This is the Holy Spirit talking. You know, I can speak on any subject. I could tell you all day till the tomorrow and, and keep talking about all the things God has spoken about the nation and many other things. So why is the Holy Spirit speaking about this? Because this is the key to getting blessed. I'm really helping you more than you know right now. Lift your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, from today, show me who I can be a blessing to. Show me what door I can open for somebody. Show me what little act of kindness I can do for somebody else. Anything that I have, I, ha I always have something to give. There's never anyone that has nothing at all to give. You have something. Someone could say you don't have a lot of money, but you have something else. Be a person that whatever you have in your life, you want to give it out. And Father, I prophesy as your son, as your servant. Wow. Woo, right here in the capital city. Right here in the ancient building, the National Archives. I prophesy that this cultural demon this, this old system from centuries of people living to take from others is being broken by the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
For whom I live and serve. Lift your hands. The anointing is here. I prophesy that people will learn how to live to give. And they'll get so happy doing it. And they won't feel sad. They'll feel happy and they won't know why they're happy. It's because the Lord is happy about it. And his joy is coming into your soul. When you live to give and help other people. God gets happy. And you don't have to help everybody. You have to help the people God shows you. Let God show you. Let God show you. Be directed by the Lord. Just because somebody has a need doesn't mean you're supposed to take care of that. That may not be for you to do. But there's somebody you can bless. Every hour of every day. I prophesy. I'm telling you this is by the Holy Ghost. It's like I'm teaching the people. I'm speaking this to the people. But by the Holy Ghost, I'm breaking an ancient cultural demonic system. And that's the work of the prophet. And I hate the devil so much. And that defeated fool hates me very much. Because of the power that I carry from heaven. Oh yes. We hate each other very well. We're extra special at hating each other. The stupid defeated devil and me, God's own son. God's own servant, his prophet. To the nations of the world. There's an anointing falling here. To break this thing. And I believe that's why the Lord sent me here this afternoon. To punch the devil straight out of the society. Not everybody will follow this. But many people will. And God will anoint people to become givers and lovers of people. Friends to other people. When somebody calls you, think of how you can help them somehow. Share what you have with them. Share your friends, share your network, share your influence. There's another spirit that's really bad. It's very evil. We think about what can we lose if we give this. It, it fights your mind. I know. I know myself. But we got to just say, you know what? Let me just give up. Lift your hands and say, I surrender. Come on, say, Lord, my life is yours. I have nothing to lose by giving. I only have to gain by giving everything that I have. I heard one man of God say this. He said, everything that I learn and everything that I have, I always give it away. And guess what? He doesn't lose. God keeps filling him with more. You give out, you get more back. You give out, you get more back. God is a multiplier. I told you about the man. He only had 100,000 something. And like a crazy man, he gave it. And somebody came and gave him a million dollars. A matter of fact, he testified that four other people also gave one million dollars each. And all the things that God's given him, I can't, I don't have time to tell. But he started out with nothing like everybody else. Some people here, you have a passion for, to, to, for ministry or for business or whatever it is. You want to have a successful life, yes? You want to have a successful life, yes? You want to be successful, yes? Start to work with the laws of God. The ways of God. Because he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
He didn't have two or three. He only had his one son. Abraham only had his one son, Isaac. And God said, take him and give him back to me. Abraham could have said, no, that's too much. But he went up to the Mount Moriah. And he took Isaac there. And he, he didn't tell Isaac that he was taking him. And he definitely didn't tell Sarah because she wouldn't have allowed it. Could you imagine Abraham saying to Sarah, Hey mom, hey mom, uh, today I'm taking your son up to the mountain and we're going to kill him as a sacrifice. She would say no. And she would hide the boy. Lift your hands. So Abraham couldn't tell anybody. But when he got there, God didn't want his son. He just wanted his heart. And the Lord said to Abraham, Now I know, Abraham, that you love me above everything else, even your own son that you waited for. Lift your hands. Can you be like that? Father, I, pr I, s I prophesy that to every person in the nation of Kenya, and we speak this word here from the capital downtown center, the Tom Boyer Memorial here, and this crossroads of all the people, and this National Archives Center, which is a heart of the nation, right from this hall, right from this auditorium, I speak that the, the nation will begin to change and take on new life. And, and new great things will begin to happen that have never happened before. Lift your hands. The anointing is here right now. The presence of the Lord is here. You can feel his presence right now. Oh, yes. And God is saying, God is saying to the nation of Kenya, I want you to learn my ways, my people. I want you to walk in my ways. I want you to follow what I've taught in my word. I want you to live to be a servant. I want you to live to show honor to others. I, I want you to know and understand that you'll make your living by your giving. And even when you don't have everything you want to have yet, you could start now in small ways. When you see someone in pain, give them the little money you have. Again, not everybody. Because some people just are professional takers. They keep bothering you and you don't need to be giving that way. But you find a genuine need, someone who really is, has a pure need. And say, I can help you somehow. I'm called to be a lover of people. I'm telling you, if everybody could catch this, the whole nation will change. Everything will shift. The, the, the problem in the country is because of hatred. Jealousy and greed. Even from the top to the bottom and the bottom to the top. The Lord says, I'm very displeased with this. I want to bring change. And every person can do something. You say, Lord, I'm just one small person. But the Bible says in Isaiah 60:22. That a small one can become like a great nation. You say, I'm a little one. I'm just a little one. The Bible says there in Isaiah 60, 22. 
that a little one will become like a thousand. You want to work with the multiplication thing that God has. And that's through obedience. Lift your hands again now. And say, Lord, I will do it. I promise. As you help me, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Ask him for his help. He, he'll help you. Oh. One, gr yeah. One great thing about God, what, he never expected us to do it all by ourselves. We're supposed to do it with his help. And, and the Bible calls him the helper. <laughs> He'll help us. He'll strengthen us. He'll empower us. He'll teach us. He'll lead us and guide us into all truth. And Jesus said the Holy Spirit will teach you and also remind you of the things I've said. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Someone shout yes. yes. Very quiet. Give him a good yes. Everybody shout yes. Oh yes, mom. Amen, mom. Amen. You got it. The fire of God's coming on her. This is great. This is great. This is great. The Lord is the best help we can ever have. He never expected us to do it by ourselves. Now let me lead you in a prayer. Say, Lord, forgive me for everything I've ever done wrong. And for everything that I didn't do yet, that you want me to do something. The thing that's good, that I didn't do yet, forgive me for not doing it already. But from today, Lord, help me. Fill me with your power. Help me by your mighty hand. That I can do everything good for you, Lord. And you'll get happy about my obedience. And you'll begin to search for me and to bless my life. People will come from everywhere to be a blessing to me when I'm a blessing to others. This is how it works. And this has not been taught enough. This has not been taught enough. Not in the churches, not in the families, not anywhere. And I thank God for people that have taught these things. They're very, but they're very few. But I speak by the Holy Ghost. As God's prophet, I say this. God wants everybody to live like this. Lift your hands, say, Lord. I'm going to live like this. To be a blessing to everybody. Amen. Amen. Remember the prayer of Jabez. He says, I want to be a blessing, not a harm to anyone. That's in 1 Chronicles 4, 9 and 10. First Chronicles 4, 9, 10. And Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, I have good plans for you. Not to see you harmed, but to see you prospering. And the way that happens is by you walking with the Lord. Again, not, it's not about church. Although church is good, especially if you're in the right church. 
If you have a good church already, you're very special. You're very blessed. But too many people don't. And let me prophesy. God's going to raise up mega centers in the country. Men that are walking right, that have the right doctrine, that have the right gospel. And the Holy Spirit is with them. And people will come from everywhere to come into those churches. And they will be built in the coming days. And some will have more than 10,000 seats in the building. In fact, there will be churches in the future days that will have 20,000 and 30,000 seats inside the building. And I pray it can go to 50,000 and more. I pray that. The largest church in the world are, are now in Nigeria. My friend, Dr. Paul Lenenche, who I know personally, he's been be asking me many times to come to uh, be with him in Abuja, Nigeria. And I'm going to go there. He built the largest church in the world. The building seats 100,000 people inside. And it's not made out of iron sheets and tent fabric. It's a beautiful world-class building. Everything beautiful. It costs hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And all the money came, it was paid for in cash. Just the roof is almost 300 meters long. 300 meters. The roof costs millions of dollars. The fence around the property costs millions of dollars. Everybody said there was no land there near the airport. But he heard God speak. And they found the land. Amen. Nobody could find it, but the Lord had the land. It was there. It was, it was hidden. It was hidden away from people. And it's big, big land. Is it a hundred acres or more? I don't know how much it is. It's huge. I don't know how many acres. It's many, many acres. It was there. Lift your hands. God has everything. But for, but for him, for the Lord to speak to the man of things on that level, the man had to be right. Are you getting it? Do you understand that? So is Dr. Paul... Uh, a, a better human than you? In some ways, yes. Because of his walk with God, his heavy prayer life, his obedience to God, his submission to a good spiritual father, the bishop in Lagos, is his spiritual father. And he built the largest building there. And one of the sons now built one bigger than him. Now the father is going to go and build one bigger than the son. He's going to have 109,000 seats in the building. The, the new one in Lagos. Can it happen in Kenya? It can happen anywhere. If God can find a man and the people to flow right. Your job is not to hate other people. And when someone's successful, you hate them, you're jealous of them. What's wrong with you? You little devil. I rebuke that spirit. You little devil. You're supposed to be a saint and you're acting like the devil. And you know the devil is defeated by Jesus. So if you act like a devil, guess what? You're defeated. And that's how your life will be. Lift your hands and say, I repent. Let's pray. Keep praying. 
Say, Lord, please forgive me. Everything wrong. I'm not supposed to hate anybody else. I'm supposed to celebrate other people. When someone else is successful, I'm supposed to get happy. Even if I would think that I would like it to be me instead of them. I'll repent of jealousy. I won't act like that. I'll have the attitude that's better. And I'll, and I'll say, Lord, teach me what they have learned. I want to also know. Somebody that does something and becomes successful knows something that someone else doesn't know. That's why they got it. Are you hearing the Holy Ghost here? So instead of hating them, humble yourself and say, Lord, teach me. But I prophesy, I prophesy. They're going to be mega centers all throughout the land. And one of them is mine. Several of them are mine. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands and say, Lord, use me. Say, Lord, use me. Lord, do something great through my life. Last week, the Lord had me prophesy on Tuesday that the demonstrations will be stopped by heaven. I prophesy. Where are they this week? Where are they? Where are they? Because it's counterproductive for the nation. People can make the point. We, we heard the point. And many agree with a lot of the things being air said. True. But you can't disrupt the whole country because of that. So I tell you as God's prophet, that day is over. They're ending now. They will stop. And there will be peace in the land. I said it last Tuesday. One week ago. Then that they tried to come on Thursday, it didn't work too well. Now, to, where are they this week? Lift your hands, say the prophecy has been fulfilled. I'm not against anybody. I understand what people are grieved about. I, I also feel the same. But the Lord says he wants Kenya to go forward in peace and progress. He wants the tourism to come back. And people from the outside, they won't come if they see all this going on. Back in uh, 2007, there were a bunch of investors that were here. And one of my friends knew them. And they went out from the hotel and they, uh, tear gas was being thrown. So these rich men, they began to choke on the tear gas. And they said, we're going to get, or we're changing our plane flights, we're going to fly out today. And we will never come back to Kenya. The money will not come here. The deal is canceled. And the people cried and said, no, please, please. They said, no. We can't invest in foolishness like this. And they left and they never came again. And that's 17 years ago. 18 years ago. You understand? Kenya is supposed to be a great place, flourishing with all kinds of good things. And that's what the Lord wants. So what's your part in that? What can you do in that? You can have a great business. If you're called to preach, you can have a great ministry. You can do everything good. 
if the Lord is with you. Let's stand on our feet right now. Lift our hands to the Lord. I'm, fin I'm finishing now. Father, we thank you. Come over a little bit. Come over a little bit. Father, we thank you that you're going to cause. Go ahead, go ahead. Baba, you're going to cause tremendous breakthrough. I'm reminded of Nehemiah 2. He said, The God of heaven himself will prosper us and we will arise and build. Lift your hands, say, Lord, I can do it too. If my life is right, Nehemiah was a man of God. Nehemiah had the heart of God. Nehemiah saw the mission before him. And he said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to rebuild this place. The Lord wants to build a nation. He wants poverty to be gone. He wants prosperity to be here. He wants blessings to be dancing with all of the people in their lives. But it's up to the individual to attract heaven like that. Obedience and humility and holiness attracts heaven. But corruption and wickedness and, and bad attitudes and a wrong spirit drives the Lord away. He doesn't want to be there. Lift your hands, everybody, say, from today, everything will change in my world because I've heard your voice here and I will follow what's been said. I'll live to give I'll be a blessing to everyone. I'll not be a harm or a trouble to anyone. From today, in greater ways. And Lord, you promise here that you yourself will bless me for doing that. I have it in your word. My Bible is in the other book, but I hold this book as a, as a point of contact, as, as if I'm holding the Bible. Looks like, looks like a good book. Yes. Why Nations Fail. I kind of like it when I'm looking. Oh, yes. It said the origins of power and of, of prosperity and poverty. Why Nations Fail. Isn't this prophetic? That this book was here. Because this is what the Lord is saying. The whole nation is messed up. Yes. Because, because of the evil ways of people. But say, Lord, for me and my house, we're going to serve you. From, from today, in a greater way. Lord, I speak the power of the Holy Ghost to come on people. We release the fire, the anointing upon people right now. Thank you, Lord, for your favor. Come stand over here. Let me stand in the middle. Just stand up right over here. Thank you, Lord. New things. New blessings. New connections. New resources. New provisions are going to find me from today. From everywhere. My life will be blessed. I'll be filled with good things. Everything I desire, I'll have it. Because I'm making my uh, covenant with you again now. With this cry of my heart today. That I want to serve you and I want to please you. Everybody lift your hands high and just make that declaration from your heart. And say, Lord, I'll do it for you. Keep praying right now. Father, 
from today, things will change for me. From today, by the Holy Ghost, things will change for me. You know, the Bible says the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. The Bible says His mercies are new every morning. Psalm 68, 19 says He daily loads us with benefits. Job 33, 16 I think it is, says I'll spend my days in pleasure and my, my life will be filled with prosperity. Why nations fail? Because the wrong system has been in place. But as God's prophet, a very unique man in ministry am I. I speak by the authority of God that from this epicenter place right here, this place right here, this very day and hour, things will begin to change throughout the society. Things will begin to change. Woo! Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell them shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it starts with you. It's, oh yes. Do you understand that? That's the most important thing I've said. Yes, God will move in the nation. Yes, he'll do all these great things. Yes, he will. But without you, how do you benefit from it? Without you, how do you glorify God in your life? You don't want to stand before God and God says, oh, you had so much opportunity, but you didn't do anything. Lift your hands, say, Lord, from today. I, I, I'm seeing this in a vision. I'm seeing this in a vision. The horns of the altar, when they grabbed them, and they said, I got to have this blessing. The ark of the Lord, the ark of the covenant, the power was there. Hallelujah. And Jacob said, I'll not let you go until you bless me. And the angel wrestled him and hurt him and pushed him this way. He said, no, I need, to, I need this. You got to. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. You, you have to be like that. And stop looking to everyone else. Do a prophetic act with me right now. Go like this. Go like this. Like the horse. Like the horse. The horse. They put the things here. They put the things here so the horse won't look this way. He looks straight ahead. You see? I'm just going to look at my path. And Psalm 119 said, The Lord is a light unto my feet, a lamp unto my feet, and a light to my pathway. The Bible says in Proverbs, chapter 3, Commit my, I, I commit my way to the Lord. He will direct my paths. I'm not going to look at everything else anymore. I'm not going to waste my time thinking about others, what others are doing. I'm going to begin to take responsibility for my life. From today in a new way. And say this with me, say this with me, say, Lord... I can't be concerned all the time about everybody else, but I have to account for my own life. 
And from today, I'll become more passionate. I'll become more diligent. I'll work as much as I can. And from today, I'll live to be a blessing to other people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God sometimes, all the time really, is looking for one whose heart is perfect toward him. And when he feels he can trust you, that's when he says, now I'm going to do it. Lift your hands and say, that day begins today for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I had another meeting, but I'm not going to make it. But the Holy Ghost is here, so let him have his way. Lift your hands. Father, raise up the new ones. The new wineskins. The new vessels of honor. The new people. The new ones. Raise them up, Lord. Let the days of frustration end from today. Let, let the days of poverty end from today. As I serve God, I will be blessed. And it doesn't matter what other people are doing. When I do the right things, God will have everything find me. And he's doing it right now. Father, release your angels all throughout the earth to cause people to bless us. As we bless others, we will be blessed. As we live to be a blessing, you'll bless us. And like Abraham of old, we're blessed to be a blessing. The purpose of the blessing is so that we will be more of a blessing. But it starts from today. In my own heart. In my own mind. In my own soul. In my own life. In my own attitude. In my own spirit. In my own obedience. In my own actions. As I work for you, Lord, everything will shift. And I prophesy this again, that the, the days of, of the, cultural, the cultural system of taking, 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 and taking advantage of people. Is ending now. It's ending now in this season in Kenya. God, God had me prophesy that heaven is releasing an anti-corruption movement. Over the nation of Kenya. And that whole system is being crippled and broken. That whole system is being destroyed. And the next generation, should the Lord tarry, will not have to see what they saw here. But again, I'll leave you with this. The change starts right here. Hit yourself here. Pop. Tap your neighbor. Hit your neighbor. Hit the person next to you. Say, 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 you have to do it for yourself. But I have to do it for myself. 
Woo! Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> Lift your hands to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm yours. From today, everything shifts. From today, I'm be, I'll be so blessed. I'll testify to everybody of all the blessings happening in my life. Everything good is coming to me. In Jesus' mighty name. All right. Hallelujah. I am Thomas Manton IV, a servant of the Lord. I'm very happy that God would speak through me. I consider it the greatest privilege of my life. And this is what I live for. Lift your hands and say, Lord, the mission you've given me, you, it will happen in new ways from today. Whatever it is you've ordained for me, Lord, from today it goes into new motion. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now, now uh, everybody's going to see this video and you'll be able to share it with your people and all your friends and associates and everybody. Share it with all the pastors. They need to repent and then teach the right things. Amen, brother. He's, this man here is going like, yes, 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 yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So, let, let, me, let me give you the ministry phone number. And it, work, it works for WhatsApp. It works for WhatsApp or SMS or phone. And, and, and it works on m -Pesa. You can sow a seed into this anointing. Yes, you can. In appreciation, in appreciation for what the Lord said. And again, as you give, you will receive. So here's the number, 0706. And you can shoot me a call right now. It's okay. Just now call SMS. Send me an SMS with your name and where you're from. Please do that. 0706-164. Beep, beep, beep. 191. 0706. 164 191 191 yes Thomas is the name okay Thomas Thomas all right do you love me are you happy are you happy we're together here in the presence of God let's just worship him for a minute and wave our hands to him oh God this is glorious. Thank you, Father. And we can send you, I'll send you my YouTube channel and you can be watching messages. And, and share with all your friends, please. Let, let millions of people in Kenya hear the word of the Lord. Yes? Father, we thank you for the men here that, and the women that have uh, put this meeting together. I applaud them. Now let's give the Lord another hand of praise right now. God bless you. And I'll, I'll see you all again. I will see you all again. Okay. Can you blow me a kiss? Thank you. Let's blow Jesus one. Oh, Lord, we love you, Lord. Okay. Kwaherini. Ubarakiwe. Gioni Jema.
Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.